medical consideration provided by... With less moderate to severe eczema, why hide your skin if you can help heal your skin from within? Dupixent helps keep you one step ahead of eczema with clearer skin and less itch. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems. Happening now. A new initiative kicking off today, trying to help small businesses in the West Side grow, especially ones owned by Latinos. How the groups involved plan to make it happen. It's a busy day for fire departments across our area, fighting two major fires. First, the challenges firefighters are facing where some storage units went up in flames. And secondly, there's a major brush fire happening in South Bear County that is threatening some structures. We have crews on site, and that's next. There's an even higher concern for fire danger on Saturday as gusty winds kick in. I have your full forecast coming up. The News at 5 starts right now. And we begin with video from Sky 12 of a voracious grass fire. You can see they are attacking it from the ground and above. This has been a stubborn fire. It has been uh, racing across much of this area in South Bear County, roughly 100 acres or so. The firefighters in South Bear County are in a race against time right now. And after hours of battling that large grass fire we're showing you, they're having to go on the defensive. Now, the firefighters estimate again about a hundred acres have burned already. Our Patty Santos is there in Somerset. What can you tell us about where this is headed now? Yeah, guys, take a look at just how close this fire line came to those homes. Those are homes that people actually live in right now. This fire looks to be moving northeast and northwest, uh, but this is what the problem is. Take a listen. That's that's how dry this vegetation is and that is what's fueling this fire and just a few minutes ago i heard firefighters come back and tell residents here they're actually going to come back and have a controlled burn of what remains of the the brush here to make sure that it doesn't reignite and threaten homes again um, they're also going to take care of some of these hot spots the residents that experienced all of this just a few hours ago tell me this was a close call I just saw fire coming out from everywhere, so I ran to the fire station and I was knocking to see if anybody could help us. But as I could see from the stop top story, it was on flame everywhere, like everywhere. It was like overwhelming us, like it was coming from this side, that side, all kinds of sides. And a helicopter is dousing the flames from the air. Firefighters telling me uh, this uh, fire is uh, about 75% contained right now. There are no homes destroyed and no one has been injured. They are evacuating residents and telling other residents to put their belongings inside barns. Uh, now, we know that they're also keeping an eye on the weather that's ahead. They're concerned about the winds that are going to be picking up. Katie, I know you're also tracking that. Exactly, Patty. Thank you so much. And I love what Patty pointed out there, the way she grabbed that dry brush and vegetation. That's part of the reason why our fire danger is going to be even higher tomorrow. Now, today it was breezy. Our winds this afternoon have been sustained about 10 to 20 miles per hour, really closer to 15 miles per hour. And we've had a few wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour. But look how gusty it's going to get overnight. Here comes our cold front. No rain. That's not going to help us out at all. Wind gusts overnight will start to gust near 40, 45 miles per hour, as high as 50 miles per hour during the first part of the day tomorrow. So wind speeds are only going up, and that's going to lead to an even higher fire danger tomorrow. We'll talk more about that coming up. Also, the rest of your weekend, not all bad news. Things will really improve once we get past tomorrow's win. A light freeze to start the day Sunday, then a bit warmer in the afternoon and for the holiday on Monday, sunny and a little bit closer to 70. We'll talk about all this and more coming up in just a bit. Steve. Thank you, Katie. And by the way, that wasn't the only fire we covered today. Lots of stored stuff ruined. 22 units taking on heavy damage due to a storage unit fire earlier this afternoon in San Antonio. Our John Paul Barajas is live where this happened in the 1800 block of Blanco. So how are things looking now out there, John Paul? 
Steve, Ursula, everything is looking much better now, and fire crews have actually left the scene and cleared the scene here. And as you mentioned, 22 units took on some heavy damage, but luckily no firefighters or bystanders were hurt in this fire. Now, fire crews got the call around 1246 for the fire and sent a massive response, including hazmat units because of concerns with chemicals. Fire Chief Charles Hood told us there is a wide variety of things in the damaged units from cars, fuel, pool chemicals, and pesticides. He did add, though, this could have been a lot worse if it wasn't for the building's firewall that kept the fire from spreading to more units and other buildings. But still, this particular job was a tedious one. This is going to be a labor-intensive fire for us as far as having to pull everything out of those 22 units to make sure that nothing's smoldering, make sure that we can get that out. We're working with the management here on doing that. And we saw the last fire unit leave here about 45 minutes ago, so crews were here for about three to four hours. And as for the cause of the fire, they are still investigating. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Rough afternoon there. Latino-owned businesses in our area getting a helping hand. It's an initiative that's taking root on the city's west side called a Star West Initiative. It was developed by the Aspen Institute. The Institute chose six Latino majority cities around the country, including San Antonio. It's a partnership looking at ways to build a strong small business ecosystem. Garrett Berger tells us how the groups involved plan to make it happen. Since August, the steering committee of local partners has been trying to develop strategies to help grow businesses here in the west side. Now it's time to kick them off and make sure the small businesses that make up this area are strong. For four and a half years, Delfino Pruitt has run Mr. P's neighborhood eatery. Like many west side businesses, his is a small one. I have a niece that comes and helps me and you know, I have a, another cousin that helps as well, but it's mainly just me. The pandemic hit his restaurant hard. But he says a PPP loan and a grant from the city helped him survive. Without them, I would have had to close. Okay. Um, this is what exists right now. But not every business owner might know what resources are available. But Miro Gonzalez of Prosper West San Antonio says making sure small businesses can get connected to resources they need is at the heart of the new Star West initiative. We all have our individual programs that we can actually help them figure out how to get capital, how to get a loan to grow their business, how to get a, a city contract and really start to grow their opportunities. But they're not going to know that if they don't have a way, we don't have a way to connect with them on a regular basis. Other strategies include equipping and training businesses to compete in a digital economy and reinvesting in west side business corridors, all while trying to avoid pushing out long-time residents. The involvement of the Aspen Institute, which has a national reach, has its advantages. So connections to money, to knowledge, to best practices. Which will hopefully bring the best results. The focus of this initiative is on Latino-owned businesses, but Gonzalez says it is open to others. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Ground shifting, that's what they think caused a chimney fire at a home late last night. Fire crews responding to this call around 10 o'clock in Windale on Windale Street near Harry Wersbach Road in Loop 410. Firefighters say that the flue of this chimney separated, probably due to ground shifting, and that caused the fire to get into the attic. They knocked the flames down quickly. The people in the home were not hurt. A battalion chief says if you live in this area, you might want to check your chimney before you use it. And a car crashing and rolling over this morning around 8.30. Police say a couple in a red SUV hit another SUV, causing it to flip. That's when the red vehicle took off, hitting another car. It kept on going until they just couldn't anymore. Then they ditched the vehicle and took off. Police caught up with the couple, though. They're now facing charges for not stopping to render aid. A woman in the SUV they hit suffered minor injuries. No word on the other driver who was hit. And now to the very latest on the coronavirus pandemic, the federal government deploying resources across the country as Omicron surges coast to coast. While hospitals are being overwhelmed, there are some signs of hope that the variant potentially is already peaking in some areas. ABC's Rita Roy has more. As the Omicron variant tears through the U.S., healthcare workers are sounding the alarm as some hospitals fill up again. We have never had this many COVID patients in the hospital at any point in the pandemic. The governor of Wisconsin calling in the National Guard to help with nurse staffing shortages as patients stream in. We've all seen the tragic story of individuals who need urgent care treatment 
whether COVID or not, but can't get it because our hospitals are full. We're estimating the first round of staffing relief will allow skilled nursing facilities to open up 200 or more beds. And starting next week, a thousand military medical specialists will also lend a hand. The White House sending them to overwhelmed facilities in six hard hit states. We are looking at, um, you know, 40, 45 days of total support, and that has a much more meaningful impact. Some waiting hours to get tested for the virus. Officials in Utah changing their guidelines, urging symptomatic people to just stay home for five days instead of getting tested. But health experts say the surge could be peaking or nearing a peak in some states. In California, authorities seeing COVID traces in wastewater potentially going down. We're cautiously optimistic um, that, you know, that we'll see that in in our clinical cases. I think this is an extremely promising sign. The White House says the administration has a stockpile of more than 750 million high quality masks like the N95 available, but it's still unclear how and when Americans can actually get their hands on them. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. More COVID-19 patients are in the hospital right now. There are now 1,028 patients hospitalized. 214 are in the intensive care unit, 76 are on ventilators. There are no new deaths to report, however, but another 3,700 new cases were reported just today. It is a busy Friday evening on the roads today. Our Samuel King joins us now with the very latest. Sam? Steve and Ursula, let's start here on I-35 on the northeast side. This is at 35 at Walls and Things Improving. A little bit here, but we had a crash and that's causing some slowdown. So a quick look here at your travel times in that area coming out of New Braunfels, 53 minutes from New Braunfels to downtown, 33 minutes coming in from Seguin. That's fairly normal. Also a crash reported at 281 northbound at Stone Oak, 11 to 13 minutes, uh, depending on uh, which way you're heading between Bulverde Road and 1604. So look out for that. Also, finally, we mentioned at the top of the newscast about the uh, brush fire. Uh, down in Somerset that is causing some delays there on Somerset Road and on Loop 1604. Steve, Ursula. Thanks, Sam. Are you in the process of cleaning out your closet? Marilyn Morris has some tips to help you sell, donate, even recycle your old clothes. I'm Myra Arthur in the newsroom with a look at stories that we're working on for six o'clock today. Elections in 2022, the March primary just around the corner. And this time, the Bear County Elections Department is facing some new challenges. For one, a handful of early voting sites are now being used as COVID testing centers. Plus, there are new rules when it comes to mail-in ballots. Jesse Degollado has a rundown of what all you need to know. And the U.S. Department of Transportation has identified a long list of bridges that are in poor condition and need fixing. We're taking a look at some of those bridges on that list in our area and whether federal money from President Biden's infrastructure plan will be used to make those repairs. Those stories and more coming up at 6 o'clock. Thank you, Myra. New at five, cleaning out the closet. Maybe this year you'll finally get around to doing it. But parting with clothing that just doesn't work for you anymore is important. 12 in your size, Marilyn Morts has information to help you sell, donate, or even recycle. Anya Stapleton is cleaning out the closets. I am making a pile of some sweaters that I haven't worn in a very long time. More than 9 million tons of clothing ends up in landfills every year, according to the EPA. Bad for the planet and lost opportunities to make some cash. I'm hoping to get rid of some of these online and sell them for pretty much as close to the original value I can. There's a growing number of digital stores and phone apps tailored to sell anything you want to get rid of. On sites like Poshmark and Vinted, you list your item and name your price. You ship it directly to the buyer with a prepaid shipping label. With ThreadUp and RealReal, you send your unwanted items off to be sorted, priced, and listed for sale. Whether they're online or in person, vintage and consignment shops won't take everything. Often it's because of the condition of the item, 
or it's out of style. So if you can't sell it, but it's still usable, donate. Goodwill is just one example. It collects and sells donations to support job placement programs. There are a lot of local nonprofits that would happily take your gently used clothing. Have professional clothes that you just don't need anymore? Try Dress for Success. Anya found a taker for her old formals. Our local high schools will often say, we want dresses that maybe for uh, students who can't afford a prom dress. You can also share or trade with neighbors by using Free Cycle Network or Buy Nothing Facebook groups. Finally, you can always recycle. Check out earth911.com to find a textile recycling location. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, we have seen a, at least one massive grass fire in our area, and that's even before the heavy winds come in, Katie. Yep, it's going to be way more windy tomorrow, so uh, that means we have a concern to see another situation like that tomorrow. So bottom line, don't do any outdoor burning tomorrow. Just be very vigilant if you're going to be doing anything outdoors that involves an open flame um, because that fire got a bit out of hand today and it's going to be even more windy tomorrow. So anything that potentially gets started tomorrow is going to be very hard to rein in. So please just be extra cautious for a lot of us tomorrow. The wind is just going to be more of a nuisance than anything, and you'll want to take some time this evening to put your loose patio and back door items away because they could go flying by the time we get into the overnight hours. Here's another look at the fire danger for tomorrow. Anywhere in this kind of peach color, that's a very high fire danger rating for Saturday. That essentially is the whole area. That's San Antonio Bear County along 35 and all the way out to the Rio Grande. So essentially everyone just be very cautious tomorrow. And the reason for this elevated fire danger is the wind also in play is very low relative humidity by tomorrow. A lot of us will have relative humidity values near or below 20%. Once you get there, that really helps to uh, fuel the fire danger risk. And as Patty pointed out at the top of the show, she grabbed that brush and that grass. It is very dry. We have expanding drought all across the area. So that dried out vegetation and grass also increases the fire danger. So please just be careful. The storm system that will bring us our front and those very gusty winds overnight is up in the central northern plains, bringing some snow to parts of southern Minnesota and Iowa there. This will be a messy storm system for parts of the Midwest tonight, the deep south tomorrow, and then even parts of the northeast on Monday. The cold front is in the panhandle and it will continue to drop south overnight. Uh, if you hadn't been paying attention to the forecast, you may think what cold front? It is unseasonably warm this afternoon, but that will be changing tomorrow. We're at 83 in Del Rio, 76 in San Antonio and 80 in Pleasanton. Winds are southerly, bit breezy at about 10 to 15 miles per hour, and we've had some gusts as high as about 20, 25 today. But things change big time overnight. So here's midnight. That's when we start to see our wind gusts increase, especially across the hill country. Then after midnight through about 2, 3 a.m., that's when the rest of us will start to notice windy conditions settling in. Wind gusts up to 40 by 3 a.m. And then as high as 45, 50 through sunrise, mid-morning, essentially through midday tomorrow. Now, as we get into tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, wind gusts will start to go down, but unless you're really watching the wind speeds closely hour by hour, you probably won't notice. So let's just call it windy all day tomorrow with our highest gusts likely in the morning, and through midday, but notice even into the afternoon, uh, it is still going to be gusty out there. So again, our highest wind gusts up near 45, 50 miles per hour tomorrow. Now, after we get past the wind tomorrow, things look great for the rest of the long weekend. Sunday, we'll start you off with a light freeze, but warming into the low 60s with plenty of sunshine. Also very sunny on Monday with a high closer to 70 and light winds Sunday into Monday. So kind of our most problematic day this weekend or more of a nuisance really will be the wind on Saturday. So this evening tonight, very quiet weather, a little bit of a breeze that will drop off after sunset. So take some time this evening to secure any of your backyard or patio uh, decor or furniture, anything that's loose and could go flying tomorrow, because even before the sun comes up in the morning, it is going to be gusty. So you'll want to have all that prep done tonight. Staying windy pretty much all day long. It will be significantly cooler tomorrow with this front as well. Highs only in the 50s. So some big changes on the way, but uh, that's how we roll here.
Yeah. yeah. We don't like thermometers that don't move like this. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's just to all stay anchored down yeah. this Saturday, right? Yeah. All right, let's head to the AT&T Center. The Spurs back in action. So is the birthday boy, Greg Simmons, Greg Simmons live Simmons. tonight Happy for the AT&T. Thank you very much. You know what I would like for my birthday? A Spurs win tonight, and that is doable. Playing the Cleveland Cavaliers, one of the top playoff teams right now in the Eastern Conference. We'll get you ready for that big game. Also, does Dak feel any added playoff pressure when we come back? Good afternoon and welcome live to the AT&T Center where the Spurs continue their seven-game homestand tonight when they play host of Cleveland Cavaliers. The Spurs will try and snap out of their four-game losing streak after falling to the Eastern Rockets 128-124 to tip off their homestand on Wednesday. The Spurs have now lost eight of their last ten games and included going just one and six on their seven-game road trip while the Cavaliers on a two-game win streak currently sit in sixth position in the Eastern Conference. For Devin Vassell, who was stuck in a hotel room in Boston for six days after testing positive for COVID, this will be just his second game back, and he's hoping the team will be at full strength by Monday. I think that's definitely the next step. Um, I mean, when's the last time that we've been a full team? You know what I'm saying? It's been a minute, but thankfully we've gotten a lot of pieces back, and, you know, we'll, we'll keep getting uh, more pieces back with Derek and Trey. Um, but, hey, I mean, everybody's had Injuries, everybody's had COVID, every team's had to deal with it, so it's not really an excuse anymore. It's just we got to play through it. All right, Derek White and Trey Jones still listed as out for tonight in NBA health and safety protocols. Tip time 7.30, high ice weight tonight on the night beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Congratulations to Cowboys cornerback Trayvon Diggs, rookie linebacker Micah Parsons, and offensive lineman Zach Martin. All three were named to the Associated Press All-Pro first team today. Now, Parsons is the first rookie defensive player in Cowboys history to make the All-Pro first team, recording 13 sacks in the regular season. For Dak Prescott, this will be his fourth playoff game in his career, and he was asked if he feels any added pressure getting his team ready for the postseason and where they want to go, which, of course, is the Super Bowl. I don't know necessarily why people have uh, labeled the word pressure as such a bad thing, honestly. Um, I think it, it creates high expectations and high standards, and they usually create high results. So um, for me, it's just about being who I am, staying true to that, knowing knowing who I am, preparing the same way that I, that I have and that I do, trusting the people around me, trusting the play callers and my preparation, uh, and then just going out there and playing the game that I love uh, without uh, any hesitation. All right, don't feel too sorry for David Culley, who was fired by the Houston Texans as their head coach after only one season. The team still owes him $17 million, which means he will be paid $22 million for coaching a bad team for just one year. I think we'd all take that paycheck. All right, more on the Spurs coming up at 6. And, of course, I have all the highlights for you tonight from what we hope is a win coming up tonight on the Night Beat. Live from the AT&T Center, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, thank you, Greg. Hope he gets his gift. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, new crash uh, just coming in here. This is Highway 90 westbound at State Highway 51. You can see it looks like a one, two, three, maybe three lanes blocked there as well as the shoulder. So uh, pretty involved crash there, Steve and Ursula. No snow and ice there, but <laughs> I know you're, you're headed that way, Sam, and we're going to miss you. Yeah, you're taking I-35 way north. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sam King is leaving us. He's going to go to Minneapolis, work in uh, radio up there. Yeah. So we wish you nothing but the best, Sam. He's, he's avoiding the camera I right know. now, which is not know. usually something he does. You can come over here. You got right, three seconds. Right. We say goodbye to Sam. He'll be doing the six. <laughs> we'll see you at the 